Hello, and welcome to a brand new day of free-to-play here on Magic the Gathering Arena. Get the dish on the latest with me, Lord Rumfish. And it is official. I'm going to be in the Early Access event. Um, it's my first Early Access. I'm definitely uh, excited. Stoked, as they may say. Um, so I'm going to uh, be uh, recording games. I'm not going to be live streaming. Um, so I may try to get something out in the wee hours of Friday, um, but expect the videos to come out more so around Friday than on Thursday. Some people are going to be, you know, live streaming events uh, starting on Thursday. Um, my first videos probably won't hit until like the night or the morning. Um, but I'd also like to take this opportunity to give a quick rules primer um, for my sake as well as yours on uh, Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-earth. So, um, probably the most um, confusing new set mechanic to talk about is the ring. Um, the ring tempts you. So when this happens, it's sort of like an ability word action, sort of like uh, it starts something in the command zone, like Venture into the Dungeon did in uh, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. So you see this card over here, Call of the Ring, um, beginning of your upkeep, the ring tempts you. Talks about choosing a creature as a ring bearer. So when the ring tempts you, um, this middle bit here, this is sort of like a command zone token that you can keep to remind you of what it does, uh, pops up. And whether you have a creature in play or not, uh, the first chapter, if you will, the first bit here, becomes active. Your ring bearer is legendary, can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. So it's actually pretty useful to put um, ring bearer status on a creature with low power, not zero. Um, later down the line, you uh, want to be able to deal combat damage on the fourth chapter of it. So, but a creature with one power would be great. Uh, makes it very difficult to block it. Um, making it legendary could matter in terms of um, if you have a common creature and you've got multiple copies in the deck, you might have to watch out for turning it into a ring bearer and then drawing another copy. Otherwise, this is kind of more of a benefit. There are some archetypes in the set where legends matter, so it's actually useful to be able to make a, another legend pop out of your deck. And if you have a creature in play, at least one, then you must choose it to be the ring bearer. If you don't have any creatures, the ring will still keep advancing until it gets to chapter four. And then the only thing that the ring tempting you does is you get to either choose the same ring bearer or select a new ring bearer. But on chapter two, and all of these um, stack, they don't replace each other. So when you're, whenever your ring bearer attacks, draw a card, then discard a card. That's nice. It starts filtering through your deck. You get card selection. You get to fill up the graveyard. Um, and there's um, an archetype that cares about drawing your second card each turn uh, to do some effects. One of the um, limited uh, colors of the set, one of the limited pairs. So, you know, already we've got... Um, you know, Legend Matters gets turned on Chapter 1. Draw a second card every turn gets turned on Chapter 2. On the third chapter, whenever the Ring Bearer becomes blocked by a creature, that creature's control it sacrifices it at end of combat. Um, so that's kind of like the old rules for, um, like, Basilisk and Cockatrice, if anyone remembers those really old cards, where uh, the creature blows up at end of combat. So they could still kill the creature that's currently your ring bearer, but the thing that blocks it is going to die. It's going to get sacrificed. And that would be a useful effect even on a larger creature. You know, you swing in with like a 6-6 trampler or whatever, and now not only is it kind of difficult to block it, but uh, anything that gets in front of it is going to get sacrificed. In Chapter 4, whenever the Ring Bearer deals combat damage to a player, each opponent loses 3 life. 
Um, so that's great. It's hard to block it anyway. And now it's like you've kind of given it three additional power um, for the purpose of killing the opponent. And for the purposes of combat, it's hard to deal with, right? It's hard to block it. Things that block it get sacrificed. Um, and now the opponent loses an additional three life if it gets through. So overall, the ring is... Or uh, the ring tempts you mechanic, I should say, is... Um, it's subtle, but it's good. It's powerful. Um, it turns on a lot of stuff that's going on in the set. Um, it's just a nice thing to have access to, no matter what deck you are. So uh, another thing to look at is uh, food tokens. Um, it's just an artifact that says, you know, pay two, sacrifice this artifact, you gain three life. But there are lots of cards that care about food and use it for other purposes in the set. So there's a whole food matters theme, uh, especially in green-white. Uh, black green apparently also has some food synergy. Like Samwise Gamgee here, if you sacrifice three foods, return a historic card from your graveyard to your hand. So some older mechanical names and such, like historic, they've resurrected for this set. A historic card is like an artifact, anything with a legendary super type, or a saga. I think all the sagas are enchantments. Anyway. And then there's also um, a mass, and they've errated a mass to not just be zombies, now it's like a mass orcs, a mass zombies, etc. Um, so let's go over to the uh, card list to take a look at an mass card. So here's a foray of orcs. It's a red and three colorless sorcery, it's an uncommon. So it's definitely going to be popping up in limited. So a mass orcs 2, and it says in the reminder text here, to Mass Orcs 2, you put two plus one plus one counters on an army you control. I believe army is a creature type. It's also an orc. If you don't control an army, you create a zero zero black orc army creature token first. So a mass, if you don't have an army, then you create a new creature token. But once you've got that army creature token, Continuing to amass builds up that one creature rather than making a new one. And this one um, is when you amass orcs 2, this deals X damage to target creature and opponent controls, where X is the amassed army's power. So, card's not bad even on its own. You make a 2-2 two, two and deal 2 damage to an opponent's creature. But I'm thinking that if you're in this deck where you have a mass as part of your deck archetype, then this is going to be like a flame tongue kabu. This is going to be an incredibly powerful card, right? Like if you amass orcs two and you take your two two army up to a four four, then suddenly you're going to deal four damage to one of the opponent's creatures, and you just pumped up one of your creatures to a four four. Now it can probably attack in pretty effectively. So this card looks really strong to me. A mass is just kind of a cool. Um, you know, mechanic that returns. So um, all the other mechanics in the set um, basically have been like brought back from the past, so they're not brand new. Uh, anyway, so just wanted to let you all know I was in the early access event, uh, just do this really quick rules primer here. And um, I'm just excited. I'm hyped up to be in this set, you know? I'm um, like, chatting with people who I've only ever watched their uh, stream before or their YouTube channel. So uh, I am really excited to take part in the Early Access event. I'm excited to see Lord of the Rings uh, getting brought into Magic the Gathering. I think that's a cool crossover. And uh, I will be seeing you guys sometime either very late Thursday night or on into uh, Friday. And until then, never stop honing your critical thinking and empathy.